Good evening, the news gang is here and tonight the reign of Madam Chief Justice Martha Kome's full plate and why it may not be a piece of cake. Also, judging the BBI judgment, the judges and all the bad manners. Plus, end of the party. Is it farewell jubilee or is the party just beginning? Our sign language gangster is Yulan Zale. Let's begin. The Judicial Service Commission is mandated to deal with uh, complaints uh, about judges because of the independence of the judges and the, because of the independence of the institution. And as it is now, nothing stops the Judicial Service Commission from advertising for the best person to apply to be employed as the ombudsperson. All right, so the news gang tonight fully constituted five-member bench, I <laughs> should add. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, so Martha Kome um, approved by parliament yesterday, Francis, and um, I think, um, I don't know how many minutes or hours it was, then, I mean, the, the, the appointment uh, was made formal through that Gazette notice, and here we are now uh, on the eve of her swearing in and the judiciary already rolling out uh, uh, an elaborate ceremony on Monday uh, to, for, they called it assumption of office, formally taking over uh, the reins of power as it were at the judiciary. But um, um, a very interesting um, new era, at least as we see it, in the judiciary. Absolutely. and. Right from the moment the Judicial Service Commission announced to us and to the nation that it had settled on uh, Justice Mother Karambu Kome, it was game over, so to say. Um, the congratulations that she received from across the political divide, from the civil society, from very many people, clearly told you that Parliament had very few choices uh, in terms of dealing with her nomination. And even members confirming of Parliament... Confirming her or confirming, confirming her? Confirming her. It, they had only two choices, to confirm her or to confirm her. <laughs> yeah. um, and you could even see members of Parliament already were congratulating her. Um, did it surprise you when uh, she appeared before the Joint Justice and Legal Affairs Committee that members were even giving her a foot thumping? Um, even from the questions that she was being asked, you could clearly tell that um, she was going to get it. And even when the, a special sitting of the National Assembly was convened by Speaker Justin Muturi, um, who did not preside it over, in any case he is elsewhere, <laughs> observing a certain ritual that probably we'll discuss at a later stage. Um, <laughs> It was overwhelming. And actually, I, I saw that sitting yesterday as more of an explanation and a wish list for members of parliament, for uh, Chief Justice uh, uh, designate Martha Kome on what members of parliament, just like many other Kenyans, would want her to do when she gets into office. So tomorrow she gets sworn in by President Uhuru Kenyatta, fairly formal, uh, because uh, she's basically appointed already. And uh, the bigger task now awaits her. Uh, on Monday, there is that handing over ceremony. And um, you can imagine what awaits her. The high entry is almost full, right from these threats on the independence of the judiciary, the question of budget. I mean, we are almost at the tail end of the uh, financial year 2020-2021 and beginning a new financial year 2021-2022. Um, backlog of cases quite some uh, uh, some work awaiting her. So basically, the new era is here. Uh, let's see what uh, she will make of it. And uh, one can only wish her the very best and uh, hope that she stays true to her calling as the leader of the judiciary. She'll be around for nine years um, if God gives her life because it's either 10 years uh, tenure or uh, until she attains the age of 70. Whichever comes first, she's 61. So 70 will come faster. So nine years. And longer uh, uh, term to serve than her two predecessors, uh, uh, David Maraga and uh, Dr. William Mutunga. So she could be the longest serving under the 2010, 2010 Constitution. Constitution. Um, uh, Yvonne, um, so. Martha Kome gets into office on Monday. What sort of entry, now that cliche, mm. <laughs> awaits her, according to you? Um, well, I think 
first of all, one of the first things will be presiding over the appointment of um, a president of the Court of Appeal, um, because um, the one who was a president of the Court of Appeal, that is uh, Justice William Oko, now joining the Supreme Court, yep. um, you know, after his confirmation, his, uh, his gazettement. I believe he'll also be there tomorrow. Absolutely. Um, mm. You know, uh, with uh, Chief Justice, I should say, designate, right? Yeah. Uh, Martha Kome. And the reason that is important is because the person who is the president of the Court of Appeal is the one that constitutes a bench to hear appeal cases, such as the BBI case uh, that seems to be headed towards the Court of Appeal. So, you know, she's wading right into that. Um, and remember, all of this is happening exactly a week after that five-judge bench uh, judgment that has, of course, elicited quite a bit of reaction, emotion in the country from all sides of the political divide. So it'll be interesting to see how she tackles um, that one as well. Um, I think just long term for me is um, just like, uh, you know, Gashuri has said, she will certainly outlive this administration, which has been notorious mm. for a number of things. One, disobedience of court orders. And of course, one as well that has also, um, you know, seen the head of state uh, censured not once, but twice by the courts. Um, that is, uh, you know, first in 2017 with the nullification of his election, and then now, uh, you know, with uh, the judgment that was delivered last week. So how she navigates that, and indeed, um, the next, what, a year and a half now, uh, you know, before the end of President Uhuru Kenyatta's term, and where this goes from here. I think all eyes are going to be on her. It's, it, it is an interesting time to come in. There's a lot of political Political heat. There's a lot of legal heat around that judgment that came in yesterday. And of course, the first thing, who she appoints as president of Court of Appeal and how that president then conducts the processes going forward with respect to that appeal process. I think that'll be interesting to see. So, so Jamila, a full plate, but not a piece of cake. Not <laughs> a piece of cake at all, because I think one of the other issues that uh, will face her is whether she'll come out as independent or whether she'll come out as a gatekeeper for the executive. I don't know why I keep seeing uh, former Chief Justice David Maraga the steps of the High Court all alone, um, without anyone with him trying to fight for the judiciary in terms of even budgets. Uh, the judiciary was given, I think, only 17 billion out of a, a budget of over 3 trillion shillings. How he talked about backlog of cases, how he talked about they don't have enough courts, how he talked about how he's being frustrated by the executive. So I think um, a lot of people want to see where she stands because she has been, um, the process actually of appointing has been so fast. In fact, you're talking about how efficient it all was between the time when uh, the, the, the JLAC uh, tabled the report and, and, and members of parliament uh, debated on it, and of course. Uh, she, the unanimous that she, she, she should be appointed by the president up to when it was Gazette notice was uh, released and up to when the, the date of her swearing in came out. So there's a lot of goodwill even in terms of how I was listening to the members of parliament debating and talking about how they're happy that she's being elected, especially the women being the first uh, female CJ that we have. So expectations are high, Joe. And I think some of those expectations are uh, maybe a bit too high because she's wading into waters that are already murky in terms of the relationship between the judiciary, even the legislator, other than the executive itself. That's one. And two, you talk about how um, appointment of judges and all that. She cannot, um, she cannot direct judges on how they can decide matters, but she can shuffle judges, especially in the high court. And we've talked about how um, the government has been accused of, of ignoring court orders. And a lot of people who file uh, cases um, against the government do so in the high court. I think it's in the, in the court's judicial review division and the okay. constitutional human rights division. Okay. So what she can do is maybe shuffle those judges. And if she does that, people look like, why did she shuffle them? So she can't really um, 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 influence how these judges um, make their decisions, but she can influence on how they They'll be, they'll be shuffled. And finally, I think we, people look to the courts for justice. We have people queuing in courts, land cases, divorce, um, matters to do with inheritance, matters to do with, you know, one after haki. And, and, and everyone is looking up to the new Chief Justice and hoping that maybe she'll be the solution to all their problems when they go to the corridors of justice, that they will get justice. How she'll do it now is, I think, one of the main issues that she faces as she steps into this, this shoes left vacant by, by former Chief Justice David Maran. Linus, there is a sense, I, I do not know where it came from, but there's a sense that somehow 
the incoming Chief Justice uh, um, is, is favored by this, the, 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 the current administration that, that she's uh, preferred and that sort of thing. And there's been quite some talk of that nature. Um, I wonder how the new CJ deals with that because, I mean, obviously, um, it's not a good tag when, you know, people view you as someone who is uh, f the favorite, as it were, of, 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 of the government of the day. I mean, rightly or wrongly, that perception is hanging in the air right now. Yes, Joe, that, that perception is the first burden that uh, Chief Justice Martha Kome will have to first of, of all offload get it off her back and be her own person because it's not a good uh, it's, it's not a good tag it's uh, it's not a good compliment more so because uh, it since the promulgation of the 2010 constitution somehow the country has gotten used to the little not so strongly implemented uh, principle of separation of powers and then there is the, the memory of uh, uh, David Maraga is still very, very strong because Maraga demonstrated institutional independence, um, even physically uh, at, at some point, going to those press conferences and, and, and speaking out. But um, Martha Kome will also have to battle with basically a crisis that she's walking into. She's not walking to a judiciary that is in good shape. Just this last weekend, we started off by talking about these attacks on the, on the, on the judges, which has generated a lot of uh, public debate of what is going on. Is this really how uh, we should treat our judges, or is this really how the arms of government should uh, uh, relate? It'll be very, very interesting to see what she says as early as tomorrow about the prevailing uh, situation where these high court judges have been, uh, have been attacked. And look, there's something else it has done. In the old few months, it was fashionable to just say, oh, it was about the 2017 nullification of the, of the presidential election. So the wakoras were few, if I can use the, uh, some of the terms that um, were used about the, 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 the judges of the Supreme Court that time. Here is another five mm. that have made a decision that seems to have rubbed the executive uh, the wrong way. In the aftermath of 2017, we had an angry president talking about revisiting. Mm -hmm. We've had a, a lot of lieutenants of the president and the former prime minister this week all launching attacks on, uh, on, on judiciary. We had one saying we should have elections. Remember in, 2013, in 2017, the president spoke of revisiting. Now, there were only four and two in 2017. Yeah. Now it's unanimous. This is five, unanimous. If we talk of revisit again, we're talking of mass tourism here. Joe. Hmm. Now, I think one of the things, and it is interesting that uh, you talk about the crisis that she's walking into, and I can't help but uh, wonder what she's going to do about the 41 now 40, 40 judges because yeah. uh, here is here is uh, for me what I see as an interesting uh, situation that she's walking into. If she goes in and immediately the 40 judges are appointed, mm -hmm. yeah. you'll be saying, "Oh, uh -huh. wait a minute! So what happened to the issues that yes. they had? Have those right. issues kind of just melted, vanished, disappeared without a trace? Because now there's a new chief justice, and if um, they are not appointed, what's going to be our approach? Because look, she said during those interviews that um, she would pick up the phone and yeah. and, 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 and call, call the, the president. president. Mm -hmm. And and I remember um, uh, DCJ um, Lady Justice uh, Mwilu asking, you know, have you got any assurance that, that uh, yep. you know your phone phones will be will be we'll picked. Be your phone calls yeah. will be picked and her answer was interesting she said well i am not the one who called so i will still try yeah. so so that is an interesting uh, first test that we will see what's going to happen to those judges because again she can't just sit there and um, uh, behave as if nothing is happening right now there's a crisis in the court of appeal um, mm -hmm. even shuffling them around to put together a bench to hear this very important national um, um, uh, interest uh, case before them is actually a challenge as yeah. many people point out so what's she going to do to resolve 
solve this issue of the 40 judges? And what is that going to portend for the perception that the public has of her and mm. her regime? And what uh, would that mean, therefore, um, about how, how she goes on from here? So she is in an interesting place that uh, we we'll need to wait and see. But um, her uh, appointment um, then means that we have an interesting composition now of the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. unprecedented, actually. We've mm -hmm. never had this kind of thing, um, where we have a lady chief justice, a lady deputy chief justice, and some people actually even talk about the, the chief registrar, that the judiciary mm -hmm. um, is, 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 is now in the hands of 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 of, of, of ladies. ladies as it were mm -hmm. that that has never happened it it's in many ways um, quite a big statement yeah. in terms of how far far we have come but how much of pressure is that because expectations are all there are we expecting too much you think from the new chief justice um, Yvonne well I you know and and I'm, I'm happy that for once there is there is something different for a long time it's been you know the reverse but one of the issues that I think that she raised in the beginning during her interviews before the JSC was she said leadership is not gendered um, you know she will be the chief justice and I think she's been very keen to just um, uh, you know remind everybody uh, that she's a chief justice period um, and you know moving this conversation away from her gender which was something to be celebrated still is but I think she's been uh, very keen to just uh, move away uh, from that issue there's also the murmurings that you know now you have a, a CJ and a DCJ both from the same gender we've been in situations where uh, you know it has been both you know before the 2010 Constitution um, but I think what is interesting now is to see um, where this goes and obviously they have a lot to prove I mean I think we've We've heard those sentiments when we've uh, had the county uh, women MPs, uh, and you know people say, "Oh, but you know what are they doing?" It's important to remember, you know, there's also male MPs who, for years, um, some have not had a stellar record either. Um, but I think for me, it's that she's been very keen to just say. I'm a chief justice, I am moving forward. And let's not forget, she has a record, um, you know, not just um, on the bench, but mm -hmm. on the bar as well. You know, she's been around for quite a long time. She's been in movements like FIDA. She's been in legal practice for how many? 30, 30 yeah, years? 33 in 33 total. 33 in total. Mm -hmm. um, and also within the judiciary, you know, has been functioning there for a long time. And I think um, hopefully that stands her in good stead going forward. And, 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 Joe, and Francis, uh, same, 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 same line. Um, I don't think it's, it, it should really bother us or focus should be on her agenda. It should be on her performance, yeah. ability to bring changes and reforms in the judiciary and basically make the judiciary user friendly. So that people who have been lining there for years in search of justice will finally say, at least there's somebody in, in charge who is yeah. um, making access to justice easy. I mean, one would, would talk about the chief justice being female and the deputy chief justice being female. But the other two arms of government are headed by men. <laughs> I mean, the, yeah. we have a president, male, yeah. deputy president, male. We have a speaker, speaker. male, yeah, deputy speaker, uh, male in the National Assembly. Only the Senate has a female deputy mm -hmm. speaker. So uh, let's, let's focus more on her capacity to perform and deliver as opposed to gender issues and everything else. But and at the same time, in, in, the, in, in relation to the very same, there's something very important that Joe raised, her working relationship with the president. Mm. Um, it's, 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 it's no secret that um, former Chief Justice David Maraga and President Uhuru Kenyatta were not in very good terms. In, their working relationship was not the best. Mm. And, and it clearly, sh it, you, it could yeah. clearly show. I remember one function during the judicial um, report. Report, yes, something. the annual yeah, yeah. report, yes. You could see the struggle right. to, you know, to relate. Um, but thereafter, a few weeks later, we saw the Chief Justice former walking down the Supreme Court stairs to, to talk alone, to yeah. talk about the frustrations. At one point, even saying that he knows or he knew of a plan to remove him. Um, now, there's something very interesting that I heard uh, Chief Justice Designate Martha Kome say during her vetting or by the Judicial Service Commission that it is not a, you know, it's, it's not a, f uh, she said fashion show or something yes, like that? Yes, yes. And the, her relationship with the president, working relationship, so to say, should be more about making the judiciary effective. And at the same time, 
a good working relationship with the president is not necessarily agreeing with the mm. president on everything. Mm. It, it's this is the independence of the judiciary. Yeah. These are the functions of the executive. At the end of the day, how do they work together to make justice, um, uh, administration of justice and ju justice del delivery more effective? Period. Anything else is the story. And on the same note and, uh, that Gashur has spoken, Linus, on the fact that yeah, it's, it doesn't, the relationship should mean that she still does her job as she should and follow the law. Um, when she was uh, being interviewed by the JSC, she said this about the issue of, of, of court orders and the government uh, ignoring them. She said, um, the rule of law, um, uh, she, the rule of law is important and should be comp complied with and she'll ensure that they adhere to, she has compliance of the court order is critical to the rule of law and she'll ensure that they ad ad adhere to. I'd love to see her wow. censuring the government mm -hmm. um, when court orders are ignored. There are so many instances of, of, of when the government um, ignored court orders. If one we've mentioned here is even about yeah. Miguna Miguna. Yeah. <laughs> twice, yeah. I think twice or three times, yeah. the courts have ordered Mi that Mi Mi Miguna will say 13 times. 13, 13 times. <laughs> but Email language, yeah. one that's just one instant. We have, we have very many examples, and it would be great to see if, if what she said during the, her, 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 her vetting was that it's important that it needs to be followed, whether that would happen, because we'd love to see that. And I think also you speak about her background and and and, and of, of human rights. She, I think she comes to an almost similar background with the form, uh, with the former Chief Justice William Mutunga. Matunga. And uh, she's fought a lot for women's rights, children's rights, being in FIDA. But one thing that she has, and I think that uh, I think William Mutunga didn't have, is the fact that she had worked in courts all across the country. Mm -hmm. and, and, and she has worked one-on-one -on -one with, with people from the bottom, Kulechini, all the way in the 33 years that she's been a lawyer and then ended up being a judge. So that experience also is, I think, what people are looking up to in terms of how she'll deal with people one-on-one, -on -one, how she's, she's seen all kinds of cases, from children's cases to murder to all those. So that experience, really, for me, is what stands out. 33 years, many of those having worked in very many different courts across this country, we are hoping to see that as she, she, she does her job as Chief Justice. L Linus, before you take us uh, to a break, that background that Jamila is talking about, the activist background. I know during the vetting she said there was a time for yeah. that and times have changed and everything. <laughs> but are we likely to see that re-emerging at some point? Remember uh, the David Maraga that was interviewed wasn't quite the one that became mm, CJ in the end. Or might it be necessary at some point? I don't know. Right. I, I, I think it'll be very interesting to see how much of her human rights defender side will come out and uh, how much she has changed as well. You see, there's that saying that uh, leopards don't change yes. their spots, mm -hmm. but in Kenya, the reverse is true. Mm -hmm. After Moi, we've seen a lot of leopards changing their, their spots. People who used to stand for certain principles, just because there is a change at the top, it's Moi Kibaki and not Daniel Arap Moi in office. It's Uhuru Kenyatta and not Daniel Arap Moi in office. Whether they're in church, uh, if you remember in the 90s, the, the church that really spoke for uh, human rights and constitutional reforms and all that, for the last 10, 15 years, they've really been, um, been quiet. And Martha Kome will be observed again with the same um, uh, lens. How much of her will change? This job, I hope she will realize that it's more about justice than it's about chief. Mm. It's really about justice. That is what a chief justice should be about. It's not about chief, it's more about uh, uh, justice. Then the second thing, and Francis, I go to your point of the uh, close working relationship with the, with, the, with the president. There should be a disclaimer on that. Mm -hmm. There should be a disclaimer on that because the principle of separation of powers is so, so clear. It's so, so, so that you don't have an executive or a judiciary that is taking instructions from mm. other, other, uh, other arms of government. Now, Maraga tried that, and it was, it was quite, quite difficult. Will um, Martha Kome achieve that? The third issue, uh, maybe that should be observed here, is, and, and Francis, you said she'll be the longest serving. Presumptively, yes, yep. because it, uh, she has nine years. Mm. And I say presumptive because I think um, the durability of our term, of Martha Comey's term, depends on the events mm. between now and, and next year yep. mm. and how she handles it. 
how she handles the judiciary in crisis. You see, if judges are being attacked this way, tomorrow it'll be magistrates, it'll be chaos. And what happens when something like that really plays out is terms become untenable. The other reason terms can become untenable is next year we have an election. If she ties her fortunes too closely to President Uhuru Kenyatta and the current government, and then we have a regime change arising from the election of, of next year, then she'll be regarded as part of the outgoing team. Yes. Not by the term limits of the constitution, but by the political environment. And I speak of the political environment of the kind that um, Chief Justice Bernard Chunga found himself mm. in. Mm. When the National Rainbow Coalition came in yeah. and Khan was defeated, yeah. it became simply untenable for yeah. Chief Justice um, uh, Bernard, Bernard Chunga, Chunga. To, conti to continue serving. So Martha Kome should be very, very careful on how far she can go with this so-called closeness with the president or, or good working relationship with the executive. It can be costly. Yes, she has a chance to be the longest serving, but she also has the possibility of being the shortest serving, depending on how she plays out between now, uh, she carries out her role between now and the election and after. And that's a good place to go for a short break. <laughs>